One tip against every warrior in Smite. These tips are meant to be quick things you can implement into your game when playing against these warriors, especially if you have trouble fighting them. These aren't meant to be comprehensive 100% counters as most viable gods don't have hard counters that destroy them easily, that's why they're viable and not trashed here. But they should hopefully be quick tips you can implement into your game if you're having trouble fighting them and something you can do very quickly. But want to know my number one tip? Subscribe to the channel. Nah, but in all seriousness, I put out plenty of educational content and guides for Smite, so if you enjoy this one, you'll probably like the rest of my stuff. So hit that button and ring the bell so you never miss an upload from me in the future. But let's get into this with Achilles. So for Achilles, watch and listen for his visual and audio cues for his three, and don't let him land that first projectile hit. A lot of Achilles' power comes from this ability, and most good Achilles players will actually level this ability first because of the insane damage and mobility it gives with the double cast. So watch and listen for him using the first dash, and be ready to avoid that damage projectile that he throws afterwards. The second dash and projectile won't trigger from minions or anything else, only gods, so if you can juke his 3 and he doesn't hit you with it, he'll suffer a lot in the boxing and overall damage department. Amaterasu. Don't fight armor in the wave. Her 2 hits insanely hard and most people don't expect it, plus she will stack up her 10% damage boost aura on one of your front minions before firing it, meaning you take even more damage if you're in range for that aura. Try poking her and clearing from the side of the wave if that's an option, or if it's not, then wait for her to fire the 2 first. It has a limited duration once she activates it, so she's guaranteed to be forced to fire it at some point, so you can just wait it out if there's no other option. Taking unnecessary poke from Amaterasu is how a lot of people lose lane to her when, in theory, she's meant to be one of the weaker warriors in the early game. Bologna. So besides the obvious tip of interrupting her two with a knock-up, silence or whatever before she can get the slam off, Bologna is really a lane domination god. She'll outclear every other god in the game early on outside of a few specific interactions because of her hammer cleave auto attacks, so be ready to play safe in the early game. Avoid boxing her directly when she's in shield stance or scourge stance, and don't get hit by the hammer cleave when she's clearing the wave. It's a game of increments when playing against Bologna. Give her a little and she'll take a mile. She plays more like a bait and punish character than most of the warriors do, so don't give her anything. Chak. So while most people correctly consider Chak to be an ability focused warrior, don't underestimate his ability to box you with auto attacks, especially in his reign. People really underrate how strong the attack speed slow is in the reign, it's very hard to escape given the reign moves with Chak and also slows you. Plus you can even get that extra AoE of reign if his axe is down. Chak can actually play very well as a boxing heavy auto attack leaning god in the laning phase which a lot of people don't recognise, so be ready to dip if he starts trying to box you with rain up. Kukulan. Play around his rage. This might seem like a bit of a 20 IQ thing to say, but it's really the best way to deal with Kuchu. Watch for the visual cues of him about to transform and try not to get hit by his rage abilities. It's limited time, so it's something you can just wait out if you're patient enough. Also, watch for his ult in rage form. Every Kukulun will cast it at some point, especially if they're about to deform, since it's on a separate cooldown timer to his main ultimate. He loses nothing for just casting it at the end of his rage form, even if it's just for damage or to clear a wave, so watch out for that and don't get caught by it. Erlang Shen. Cripples. A lot of Erlang's power comes from his 3, mostly the turtle form. Without that on-demand knock-up and shield, he becomes so much weaker. So in the pick stage, try to pick gods like Arteo or Ares to hard counter Erlang. However, you can't always counter pick directly, so here's another useful tip. Erlang's ultimate heal takes a long time to come through, so if you see him ulting in a fight on low HP, don't just disengage assuming he'll heal out of range before you can kill him, there's a decent chance you can run him down before the heal comes through and still get the kill. Especially if he's jungle Erlang and not very tanky. Guan Yu. So besides the obvious buy anti heal lol to counter his one, a good way to deal with Guan earlier on in the game before you can get your big anti heal online is to pick a high pressure solo laner and invade his blue buff frequently, and also aim to secure every totem for your team. Denying a Guan Yu his mana regen will cripple him significantly in the laning phase, and if you can get Guan behind in the laning phase he struggles a lot. Guan's biggest strength is getting to late game and abusing those strong heals and amazing teamfight presence with his ultimate, so if you can manage to shut him down early and get him behind, that's your best shot at making him useless for the rest of the game. Make sure you focus on abusing his poor mana pool and get those blue buff invades going. Hercules. This is a simple one. Don't box Hercules at level 1 or in the early levels in general unless you know you can win the trade. I see a ton of people taking auto attack fights with Hercules at level 1 and it's a terrible idea. He gets 18 extra power at level 1 from his passive, so his basic attacks are hitting 18 damage harder than yours at all times. That really adds up when you're trading 10 or 15 auto attacks and will often get you killed or poked out of lane early on. Horus. Just abuse the massive wait time on his ultimate, try to pick him off and force him to use the ultimate defensively and just pump damage into him while he tries to run. Even if you don't land the kill, you get a ton of free damage on him and force out his ultimate. 
Horus Ult is best used as an engage tool, not a disengage tool, so if you can force him to ult defensively, it's going to work out great for you. King Arthur, anti-heal and cripples. Either or works really, but having both will really shut Arthur down. You're going to struggle in the early to mid game once he gets glad shield online, but that's just Arthur, that's just a given. But as the game goes later on and he becomes easier and easier to deal with by just stopping him healing and killing him on the spot. Picking cripple or anti-heal gods is great if you can, and if not then just buy plenty of anti-heal items and relics in game and focus him down in team fights. Mulan. Pay attention to when she evolves her abilities. A great way to keep pace and not get hit by unexpected damage while boxing in solo lane is to keep an eye on your opponent's level and item build. As they hit level 9 you have to be more careful as they get a second point in their ultimate or if they just finish glad shield you may want to avoid boxing them for a while. Well Mulan works the same way with her weapon skills. She's not been out too long and these numbers aren't absolute but be ready for Mulan to gain access to the bonus hits on her primary ability, the one she levels first at around 6 to 8 minutes and her two secondary abilities, the one she levels afterwards at around 12 to 14 minutes if the Mulan's keeping pace with the rest of the game. Nike. Silences are particularly strong against Nike since they hard counter two of her abilities. You can immediately stop the channel of her 1 and her 2 with an on-demand silence, so pick a god such as Hades or Nox and you can shut her down quite hard. This is especially relevant since she has knock-up immunity in the 1, which makes the typical counters to channeled abilities not very viable. Odin. So besides the obvious buy phantom and pick jumps to counter Ring of Spears tip, new Odin doesn't really play the same way old Odin did. Old Odin would play mostly for the huge burst of damage from Bird Bomb and then wait for cooldowns. New Odin uses the shield for more defense and enjoys sustained fights a lot more due to the insane damage output and very low cooldown of his new 3. So watch out for getting into sustained fights with Odin that you can't win. Before the rework it was a great strategy to try and force Odin into sustained fights as once he used Bird Bomb he struggled to find damage until it was back off cooldown. But he fights very differently now so be aware of that. Osiris. So a lot of new players or people who haven't played much against Osiris will see that he has no innate healing. However, anti-heal is a surprisingly effective measure to deal with Osiris. Since he always builds gladiator shield and spams the one for healing, and sometimes will even build berserker shield on top of that, the healing really adds up and this is amplified by his damage mitigation and damage reduction effects, making the healing even stronger. This is a simple one, but something often overlooked when playing against Osiris. Sun Wukong. Don't stand in your own wave and don't clear from the front to avoid unnecessary poke from his cudgel and his two. Cudgel is near unmissable and if the Wukong wants to hit you with it then he will hit you with it, but you can at least make him choose between clearing the wave and poking you out and not giving both at once. This also helps reduce the healing he gets from Gladiator's shield too if he's just hitting your wave and not hitting you with it. Tier. Speaking of healing, while Tier isn't a healer so to speak, he has some of the best self sustain in the entire game, yet people rarely buy anti-heal against him. The new Contagion item works wonders here as like a second item in solo lane and it's even better if the tier also buys Glad Shield or Cad Shield and it's pretty likely he'll buy at least one of those and the anti-heal becomes even stronger. Besides that, watch for his stance switch and be ready for a fearless, especially if he's going into assault stance from guard stance. There's a brief period after he uses the stance switch where he can't use an ability so use that time to juke or plan ahead on what you're going to do when he inevitably fearlesses you. For mana. Just wait out and run from his ultimate whenever possible. The ult is the main reason for mana can decimate teams and it doesn't last that long if you're not giving him extra time by fighting him. Just run to safety, ideally under a tower or over a wall since he can't follow you that way, and wait it out. And of course, once again, anti-heal is very important against the mana if you're going to try and focus him down in the ultimate. A counterpick of Sir Ket, Odin or Osiris works wonders, but if you can't counterpick him directly then just build plenty of anti-heal items and hope for the best. But that's one, or more sometimes, tips against every warrior in Smite. Keep in mind these are meant to be just quick things you can do in game to improve your odds of beating these characters, they aren't fail safe 100% counters to them as most strong and viable gods aren't easily countered. But do let me know if you found this video useful and I can work on the same thing for other classes. Also if you have any other useful tips for warriors that you think could benefit the people watching then definitely leave them down below. I'm sure there's more tips that the audience as a whole can add on top of the tips I've added in this video. And before you leave, do be sure to drop a like on the video, it really helps the channel out and lets me know you guys want to see this type of content more and that I should make some more of it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Peace out you nerds.